Um, to answer your second question, how do you determine the rental rate? The, the, the shortest answer is, is by analyzing what other homes in the area that are similar to yours are renting for and determining the difference in years and how you can maximize the rental income of that property. The number of bedrooms is going to drive that. The score of footage is going to drive that. The school districts are going to drive that. Proximity to parks, recreation, shopping, restaurants, churches, grocery, all those things are going to determine the desirability of it. But basically, it's a market analysis of what will the market bear. Um, a good rule of thumb, a general indicator, don't exclusively use this, but about 1% of value, right? So if you had a $200,000 home, it's probably going to be in the ballpark of $2,000 a month a month in rent. Uh, uh, in some areas, it's always going to be lower than that. In other areas, it's always going to be higher than that, right? Because what you pay for a home doesn't necessarily mean that's what it's worth, right? Um, but that 1% rule is a good kind of, you, you, you're typically not going to find yourself way, way off of that, right? Now, another question that's sort of implied in that is how much cash flow per month makes for a good rental, right? So like how much can I charge doesn't always indicate how much you can earn, right? So let's say you're getting $2,000 a month rent for a $200,000 house. But for whatever reason, it costs you $2,100 a month. Well, that's obviously negative cash flow. That's not good. You're losing $100 every month. Just to own it. Even before you had an air conditioning go out or a roof that needs to be replaced or foundation damage. Now, some people do that. I don't suggest it ever. But some people do that because they believe that $200,000 house is going to be worth $300,000 in five years. So I'll lose $100 a month to make $60,000 a year over the next five years. Okay, well, you know. Well, playing the long game, I guess. $20,000, I guess. Anyway, the, the, the point is um, that's a speculative game. The cash flow game of I make money every month on this is obviously a safer, more secure, more long-term strategy. So... We'll leave it at that for now. I'll happy to answer any more. I, I guess along the same lines, like how do you maximize your your profits? Great question. For a we could do five radio shows on this, but let me give you a handful of nuggets right here. And before we do that, let me just say, when it when we're thinking about cash flow, that's usually like, you know, your total rental income minus your expenses. And for most people, one of your largest expenses is going to be a mortgage payment. Obviously, I strongly advise to get out of debt as fast as you can in every way you can, even on rental property. But debt is the primary way that most of us, all of us, acquire real estate. Patrick Glaros and his team at Cardinal Financial are excellent at helping you secure financing for rental properties as well. So check them out at patrickglaros.com, patrickglaros.com. Near all-time low rates right now for owner-occupant purchases, but also for rental investment property purchases. So you definitely want to reach out to Patrick and his team at patrickglaros.com. Now, how do you maximize your your total in income for a rental property? I stopped myself just then from saying rental income because the very best property owners are generating income from more than just rent uh, or more than just traditional property rent, right? So let's just say you had a fourplex, okay? Um, sometimes there are parking fees. Sometimes there's some storage units or closets on site. There's some additional rental fees. You might even have a vending machine. Uh, you might have um, a little bit of an association fee for community maintenance, property maintenance pools or something like that, or there might be some additional revenue to be earned. Um, if you have a single family house, which most people are going to have, let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, maximizing your rental income would look like what we talked about a minute ago, analyzing what other people are paying for homes nearby. And then thinking about, could I get a little bit more money for rent if I if I took care of the lawn maintenance? Could I get a little bit more money for rent if all the utilities were included? Could I get a little bit more than my cost, right? If I just said, look, you write me one check every month, don't worry about electrical, don't worry about heating and air conditioning, don't worry about water and trash, lawn maintenance, any of that. Yeah, you could probably get a little bit more because you're providing convenience. That's why milk costs more at the corner store than it does at the grocery store. It's easier to get in and out. It's more convenient. It's closer to the house, whatever. Um, so there are some ways to do that. Obviously, the flip side of that is by minimizing your expenses, right? So if a house is paid for, you're going to cash flow more. But you're also, e even if you thought about 
if you made a true comparison to, to borrowed money, you're not paying interest, right? So the amount you paid in cash for the house is the same as the amount you're paying in principal for the home, but the interest is going to cost you more. Uh, if you can minimize your tax cost by protesting your property taxes or making sure that you're being accurately taxed, um, if you manage your tax return by fully depreciating that asset, writing off any interest or anything in any legal ethical deductions you have, then you could lower your expenses, right? If you can get lawn care done cheaper, if you can get property maintenance done cheaper, then you can create a bigger gap between your income and your expenses, therefore maximizing your revenue. Uh, There's other ways, but those are a handful of the simple, traditional, predictable ways that most property owners can take advantage of to increase their cash flow. Um, Some other ways just to add one or two more are to to eliminate or minimize deferred maintenance, right? So what I mean is every year you probably have some pest control or some heating and air conditioning or proper, you know, touch-ups, paint, window, wood rot, that kind of stuff. But every five or 10 years or more, you might need to replace a fence or an air conditioning unit or an appliance or something like that. If you can maintain those, you might actually need to spend a little bit more every quarter or every year so that you spend a lot less every five or 10 years over the long haul that can increase your profitability on a property as well. 